The way that it was indexed, I noticed um, you can, it didn't really work the same way that when I tried to click on the, the green page from Google, I saw that it was uh, a little bit more problematic and it took me to a 404 page. So one thing I would, I would definitely do is you know, at least get started on working of cleaning up how your index and, and your site index overall. Um, Hreflang is always a big thing to help out in that way. Oh, it's weird to see them. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, in general, I see that you're trying to go after patents, tra trademarks, and designs. Um, one thing that I noticed was. So just about SEO for B2B, so most of our clients are, are B2B and we generally recommend not going in a full-fledged uh, SEO camp advertising campaign, it's not, not SEO. Um, what we do tell our, our B2B clients is it's worth having uh, like an audit of their site every once in a while just to make sure the technical things are working properly and, and that you know it's uh, optimized from a technical infrastructure type of point of view. Um, that, but that's generally what we recommend for B2B SEO. How many buzzwords can we throw out on the stage? Um, I, I would say, you know, my uh, experience in SEO is definitely off-site SEO. As, in, as an incoming links, uh, how to get them. And these guys are talking about on-site SEO, so um, there's obviously a whole universe out there in terms of how to get links. But uh, I think if we uh, sum that up with one word, and this is just general kind of like advice in general about SEO is um, content, right? Nobody's linking to a static website that just stands there and doesn't offer any value. Uh, not big sites, not small sites. And any small site, no matter how small you are, can get incoming links um, through content. So. So I just, and I know we're familiar with the site, so just looking at the site. Um, so you, you, maybe in your navigation also, you, um, since your, your field is patents, trademarks, and designs, in particular, primarily tra patents and trademarks. Um, you might want to try to use that in your navigation, maybe towards the top level also, uh, to clarify for people, in, ad in addition to, you know, for SEO, but to clarify for people what you're offering. Um, and also your page called uh, monetization, now maybe it's, uh, it means something else in the field. It's just, I, I think that um, to many people it could mean something else. If you're, if you're targeting companies that are startups or, you know, high tech, they may come to that thinking that you're going to help them monetize their company when that's not really, I think, what you mean. So I would maybe use the word. You could monetize companies today? <laughs> totally like a bubble. And, and on that same note, I would improve title tags, meta descriptions, just, you know, in general, the, the basics of looking at, you know, patents, trademarks, and design, I think is pretty broad, and, and maybe try to, to zoom in a little closer on, on what exactly you do. Um, so I think, uh, any other specific questions on the site? Okay. No, I, I, I was just looking to understand when it's a B2B and a more other startups potentially or other people, a technologist, like it would be if you needed a cardiologist, would you go searching on Google? I mean, I don't know, maybe some probably. <laughs> I would too. But, uh, um, it, <laughs> just like in, in many businesses, a lot of uh, clientele, people will search because they don't have anyone to refer them. So it probably is worth making sure that you're at least ranking well. But based on what you're saying about people coming through people who recommended them or whatever, or they, they want to be convinced that they'll come to you as a service provider. So one thing that I think that would be very valuable to add to your homepage, at least and probably your internal pages as well, is um, our testimonials. Right. Okay. So yeah. I would recommend that. I would recommend um, Moving on to the next site, is uh, Rotem in here? Who submitted the Rotem site? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the, the farming site. All right. We're supposed to be negative here, sorry. No, we, can, we, we don't have to tear people apart. Rip people apart, what do we say? Um, pregnancy info? Someone submitted that? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I did that. You did that. <laughs> I know. Exercise to stop smoking. There we go. To stop smoking in pregnancy. Um, moving on, uh, the home fixers. I think I saw Menachem walk in. All right. Cool. So, home fixers is doing a dev site right now. Um, Menachem, raise your hand. Uh, 
one thing I told you when we were schmoozing in the back is I would make the phone number larger. Um, I think that people who need a contractor fast and you know have a week want to just call faster just for you know, basic conversion rate optimization. Um, get that phone number going. Um, other than that, though, just you know, looking at the site, I, it looks good. Um, you know, obviously the, the on-page stuff of you know title tags, meta descriptions, just make sure that all that's up and in, in a good place. Um, I know you don't want me to say a blog, but a blog. Can <laughs> we talk about that for a second? <laughs> Sorry. No, but seriously, yeah, I, I, we're, we're drilling down very deep, and that's great. But uh, except for one of these sites, I don't really understand why anybody would talk, would talk about you. I know Menachem, you can talk. Why would anyone talk about you besides word of mouth? We're talking word of mouth. It's very powerful. But on the web, right? You want to get links, not you specifically. Any any site wants to get links, right? That's the goal to get more. Kind of like. Um, in the world of SEO, I think, not to get too philosophical, but once someone once told me something kind of brilliant, and I apologize if anyone's ever heard me say this before, but um, it's kind of compared to the restaurant industry. So if you're opening up a restaurant, first things first, put a sign outside, right? So that people who walk by know what you're selling. That's your title on your, on your page. Right? If I come across your site on Google, and I, there's no description, there's no title, I don't know what you're doing, I'm not coming in, right? Like a, a restaurant. Now, what's the most important thing in a restaurant? Food. Food. Food, right? That's the content. At the end of the day, I can come to your website because someone told me about it or it was good, mar it was good marketing, but if I come in with food sites, I'm not coming back. And that's the content on your site. No one's coming back to a site that has bad content. Uh, and this is the most important thing in a restaurant. Service, right? That's the speed and optimization and just the overall experience of your restaurant or your site. If your site's not mobile optimized, if you know, there are errors and it's just bad, you know, badly formatted, poorly formatted, just gives a bad user experience, and again, I'm not gonna come back with my heavy to food is. Uh, at the end of the day, though, all those things are nice, but how do you really get people to come to your restaurant? How do you get millions of people to come to your restaurant? You get food journals to talk about you, right? The more food journals talk about you, the more serious food journals talk about you, the more people you get to your website. And that's, it's called income links on the internet. Um, there are different levels of incoming links. You get a link from the New York Times, it's not the same getting a link from some blogger. Uh, and that's measured, you know, differently. Speak more about that in terms of the algorithm. You know, authoritative sites, page ranks, all that stuff, it changes all the time, but you need good links. Now, Black Hat SEO, it's hard to buy links, right? You pick up the phone or you send emails, say, please link to me, I'll link to you. And that's basically saying, okay, Google, I get what you're trying to do, let me go like this, right? Instead of just getting links organically by providing good content. So if you have a static site that just stands there um, and it doesn't update, there's no dynamic content, there's no value, there's no, the people that will talk about you are people that are writing reviews maybe of sites in your space, but other than that, you're not gonna get very many people talking about you. Uh, which, which means that you're really not going to scale very well. So my question to all these sites, just in general, is, and, and you mentioned the blog list, but you got me all fired up. Yeah, and I think that you know what Phil said this morning about video could also be really cool for hundred pictures of you know maybe some like quick fix it yourself of like someone unclogging your drain or just some of the most common issues that not necessarily you want to to call someone for, but you just want to take care of right away. It's a beautiful site. There's no question. I'm assuming this is what it is, right? But the lowest quote doesn't come across clearly there, so you might want to. Um, you know, you compare instant free quotes from licensed contractors for your job. That's like the feature. What's the benefit? Choose the best contractor for your budget or, you know, for the lowest price. I would maybe like shout that out. You know, you don't want to make them think there's that whole philosophy. Just tell them exactly what they're going to get from you, and then I think you'll probably have some chance that someone will um, fill it in. And uh, the problem with that is that I don't want to give that message to the contractors who are going to sign up. Well, but it's I mean, how are you telling them that people are going to choose you because you're so great even though your price is higher? Right. So are you giving them a way to get across the fact that they're so great in, let's say, a profile? No, they know that that's it, but they don't want to be pushing, you know, as All right. Well, you're like in a struggle there between yeah. their benefit and your benefit. So, I mean, it's in your hands, but that's, I, would, I would recommend that. And then, of course, blog content definitely because the DIY right. industry is like huge and people are all trying to paint their houses and whatever. Me, I'm just, you know, living with what Kelly Brown call it, renter's wife forever. But, <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, people really do actually like know how to put nails in walls and things. So, like, if you have tips, for that kind of stuff, people will totally be sharing it and coming to your site. I mean, I feel like that's also like a huge opportunity. Yeah, it's a huge thing in that. You know, that's where I turn. You said, you, you said video. Um, everyone knows, everyone's talking about how hot video is and how 2015 is the year of video, but really, not that. How many people here actually have a really like thorough video strategy that's doing like, you know, consistent video content? Raise your hand. 
exactly one. Right? Everyone, went, woo! Everyone knows that video's out, but how many people are really leveraging it? Not many. And it's and there's no and the barrier is lower than it's ever been. I'm not gonna plug Meerkat, but Meerkat. Right? And I think that kind of brings us to the, to the next site that I saw was just submitted, uh, Bio972. Someone in the room there? Oh, there we go. Um, hi. Um, so, I mean, again, I think the Israel Science Community video is really the way to go. Um, it was just... Yeah. Power of the like real-time web. Yeah, the real-time web. Um, it, you know, it's a great, looks like a great uh, source of content. Content, I guess is the word. I'm trying to find another buzzword. But it's completely other sentences now. Uh, sandwiches? What's that? Sentences. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's just a lot of content here, and I think that using content places of, to see, to understand, you know, what are people looking for exactly? And, you know, using sites like Quora and you know other content resources, and, and seeing what questions you could answer, I think would be you know really great and, and provide really value to the community. It's, there's all these buzzwords that are being thrown around, unfortunately. <laughs> Markers ruin everything, like everything. Anything that's good on the internet will ruin it. Uh, but the reality is that as, of, as, as, of, as we speak right now, and this might change, right? The algorithm changes all the time, but the name of the game is content, really. You write X content on the internet, you'll get X traps. If you write 2X, you'll get 2X, right? I'm not saying if you write crappy content or inaccurate content. If you write decent content, you'll get a lot of traffic. If you write double the amount of content, you'll get double that traffic. That's it. So, I, don't, I honestly genuinely do not understand sites or, or companies that have no content strategy whatsoever. There's no way anyone's finding you if your site just sits there and just sits there and doesn't do anything, right? So, um, is, is the person here for Bio972? Oh, hi. First of all, it's a beautiful, wonderful site. Call it a bug, then. Like, it's really amazing. Um, and you have such amazing content, but what I see is really like the only way to really uh, subscribe to your content is through an RSS subscription and to show that people don't not like it enough that they would leave. I would have email pop up and offer them something in order to get the email. Sorry. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is I love that the social is so front and center here. Right? Twitter and Facebook and RSS. I don't, I don't believe that they should be on the same level. At least not in 2015, maybe in like 2009. Uh, I, don't, I don't mean that in a negative way. Serious. Like RSS is a great tool, but I don't, I don't know how many people here that really are active on RSS, like Google Reader or other. I mean, it's not a it's not so... Yeah. Ish, right? Ish, really ish. Yeah. Something we need to be able to do. I don't know if RSS, you know, should be so front and center. I also don't, I definitely don't think that you should, um... This hasn't actually launched yet, so... Uh, but, uh, honestly, it's a beautiful site. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and I love that the uh, content is the main kind of product here. But I, don't, I think you should have those, those logos. Maybe you should have your last tweet, your last post, something. to hook me in, but the number of followers... Irrelevant of the fact that the numbers are low, because even if it was 100 million, I don't think that, that should be your metric. It's kind of like telling, you know, that's your message. That like, I'm all what I'm worth is you know the number of followers I have. That's not what you want to communicate. So I, I would not. I love the way they look. I love that it's there, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't put our says there. I definitely wouldn't have the amount of followers uh, as your metric. I would definitely include Google Analytics just from a technical perspective. I would include Google Plus. What? I would include Google Plus. Google Plus. But I mean, to get Google Analytics on there to understand what people are looking at. Um, maybe make the search bar more prominent to, to get that to, that to Google Analytics and you can really understand your audience better. Yeah, increase the search. The, the search. Mm -hmm. It's very small up there. Um, tap into the, the Academia Network. It could be really great to, you know, for links um, to get EDU sites. It really would be key. Really nice site though. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, just one other thing. Uh, you might want to consider, I mean, there's pros and cons to it, but as far as I can see, you know, do you have comments open? Comments. Do you have comments open on the post? I do, but I haven't. Uh, the site isn't really active live. yet. It, it's not really live. Uh, it's just a soft comments? opening. To so you should definitely have comments. And I'm, I'm actually thinking that maybe you should have Facebook comments in the beginning. Uh, because uh, it, uh, it adds a little viral addition. Just make sure it's done properly so that you still own your comments. There's a way to do it so it's still stored in your database. But is this built on WordPress? Yeah. Yeah, so there's a way to do it that you still own your comments. It's not just all on Facebook. Um, so just do it properly. But I think, especially if you're launching a new heavy content site, could be good for the viral component of that. This is like the world of renowned WordPress experts, so far be it from me. But what, uh, what, which commenting platform do you recommend in WordPress that you like by fire or discuss? No, no. Like your own? No. Like, like, I mean, I would, I would use actually the straight out of Facebook comments to start. I'm, I'm not a fan of these other ones. They have their pros and cons, but uh, I'm making fixes instead of saying anything. <laughs> I, I just had, I've had really, really, really bad experiences with, with comments. You know, I, I open my blog right now. Literally 400,000 troll, troll comments. Oh, 
you, you need to prove your hand to spam in the comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, WordPress has great plugins for that. Yeah, um, the spam. I think, I think we should move on to the next site. Um, Tomorrow's Genius. Did someone submit that? Someone in the room? Okay. Tomorrow's Genius.com. Domain. Um, domain looks great. The site looks great. Um, I see that it's you know attempting to for online learning for exam prep in foreign language. Um, I think you should get a contact form higher up on the site. I mean, there's definitely the phone numbers there, but but just to have that is a little bit higher. At the same time, on-site wise, put your title, your name of your brand in the title tag, or else Google will switch it out for you. Just what is tomorrow's Genius.com? Yeah, so it's a problem. It's a problem that Hillel, it's a problem that Hill is asking that. I think you say it down below, small group classes, but you really should say it up higher. What you do? Who, who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Uh, I'm David, and uh, Tomorrow's Genius does live online instruction. So tutoring, exam prep. It's very different. Just curious from like the 500 million. Yeah. No, I wanted my comment. The worst part is that you look at the website for a few minutes and you don't even know what you do. So I, I get that. I apologize. Okay. But definitely have some type of login or, or something for people to, to come back. Maybe a few prep videos. Did you say what the phone number for? I don't love it. I, I would put the contact form there instead. I would, I would say, I would say, I would put a phone number there for like 1981 called the mind the back. <laughs> Sorry, it's, I, I was just it's kidding. Online, it's online. You don't necessarily so, need a phone number. Phone numbers can be useful. Like some people do want, but like it's not clear that it's useful for you because it's not clear what you're doing here. So I think really, like first and foremost, make your message really clear and upfront uh, so that people come to your site and really know. You know, um, there's really cheap or free services that you do user testing for you. You can send them to your site, and like these people all over the world, you say, "What does my site do?" or "What message do you get?" or "What's the feel? What's, what feeling do you get?" And you can give them tasks. And like, if you if your goal here, let's say, is to get someone to sign up for a course, I mean, the truth is, I actually do not know how to sign up for a course, right? So you want to like make a way and then do user testing and see that people can actually sign up for a course. So this is online courses, right? But I don't even know why. Why do you need a phone number? Who, who answers that phone number when I call? I mean, people. That's literally your. your that's literally your, your your main call to action. Right? That's, but if I come to the site, that is what I see. You want that's. I don't know. That's why I'm here. You tell me. Uh, I, yeah. I, I would say I would say put a yeah. join a course now instead of a phone number there right. in that upper right corner. And the fact that there's a free consultation on like the individual pages, I would have that somewhere as like a. You know, it's a great call to action on the, the home page as well. Um, it took to get to the English language arts page for me to even find it. Mm -hmm. um, your, your sliders, for example, are like your premium um, real estate, and like your third slider says anytime, anywhere, something, something, like that could apply to anything. So also, because it's your premium uh, real estate, you really should have messages there that are just focused. But also in general, by the way, instead of moving away from sliders and just having one clear, clean message and a call to action, sign up now for a free trial or contact us for help or whatever it is. So yeah. Yeah, we're all ADD. Yeah. <laughs> Every single person in this room is ADD a guarantee. You're not making me click three times to see the content. Like sliders are not. I mean, they're, they're, it looks nice. I've been telling you last it looks really nice, but you know, Business Insider is well known for its, um, its uh, slideshows. Like everyone hates them for it. You know, because they're trying to increase like Clicks. So, and I would improve title tags, meta descriptions, just in, in general, S SAT, ACT prep. Include online there. That, that's a big factor. It's a big selling point that makes you unique. And I think that people want to see that it's online. Just a little small inconsistency that's maybe a bit picking right now. But like each one of the drop down menus has a nice amount of things. Except for our instructors, it just has one. So maybe if you're not gonna have a drop, you need, if it's yeah. just meet our instructors, then just make that not a drop down menu. You know, top level. Be our instructors, but then even that's even that. right now. It, sh it shouldn't be like everyone has five, six things, or it's two, and only one has one. But it's a really good first effort, really. And your branding is good, so no, no, it's great. Right. And, and anyway, <laughs> websites are all you told us you're a good heart, so I guess so. Yeah, and you keep for putting yourself up. Yeah, there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone that else that has a site to submit? Oh, we can just stop general. Yeah, you submit it. Just WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp. Wow. Let's see. I, mean, I don't think you can click. I don't think WhatsApp. Uh, Israelmaven.com. Oh, I know that site. What do I know that site? Israel Maven. M A V E N, right? What is it? In one sentence. What is, what is it? One sentence. Tour operator. It's open. Israel Maven. Family tours. Women's <laughs> community mission school trips. 
Um, I mean, there's so many tour operators, it goes to what makes you unique. And just trying to, to get that, you know, personalized tours, just create a unique message across the... Please feel free. Okay, go for it. So, is it mobile responsive? When was the site built? Like, it looks like it was, right, exactly. So I think that's actually the message here. I think we need to update, and it looks like it was built a few years ago, and I'm looking at it on my iPad, so it's it just tiny on the screen. Yeah, it's not mobile responsive, unless you're just looking for the words family tour. So I think that's what it means. Oh, mobile responsive is a, a development method so that the site- It's the only development today. Well, yeah, all sites must be more responsive. Google actually added it as a part of their algorithm, right? So, um, and there's actually a really easy way to test if your site is mobile responsive. Google has their own tool. Look for Google, Google mobile test something and just Google. Google. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and with WordPress especially, there's easy plugins that you can use to make the site responsive. Yeah, basically, right? like access your site from a mobile phone. I want it to look good. Right? We're all access on your site from a mobile phone, so that's what mobile responsive means. And it will respond when the screen is smaller. Um, yeah, it needs to be 100% more responsive. Just about the WordPress plugins, my opinion, don't use plugins to make your site responsive. Make your site responsive. Idea. Yeah, it's not ideal. Like maybe it's, I don't know if it's WordPress now, but it could be like a band-aid. Like but uh, don't, do, don't use plugins for it. You want it to retain your brand and your design and like your content and structure. Plugins are not great. In your defense, in your defense. Yes. I mean, this is a really niche site. Right, it's targeting a very small audience. In other words, this doesn't have to be like a you know wow website that needs to like reach top ten websites. I mean, this is, maybe for this audience, this is good enough. Just mm. no. Well, but you can try. But even if it's <laughs> no, it's, it's very good. You got the content, but like I'm looking at it on my iPad and these like little thumbnails, day trip. It's like I need a uh, binoculars to see it, right? So. It's like, it could be a good structure and good content for your users, except for that if they're using anything aside from Internet Explorer on a PC, then they're gonna have trouble probably seeing it. So first and foremost, it should be visible and usable and user-friendly and mobile responsive, and then after that, you know, whatever. Uh, but there, I, do, I do like, again, the uh, social buttons, front and center social before they engage with you on a business level. If I go to your tweets right now, it is all, without exception, Broadcast, like you're just broadcasting, right? Let me see here if you're replying to people and like you're wrong. Yeah, no. It's all broadcast, right? You're just like selling, selling. Like if I. And it's also automatic auto posting from Facebook, right? So it's getting cut off halfway through. So the real message you're trying to get across might be getting across. And, and also the content should be on your site. Like if the goal is to have a link that someone's going to click through to you, what you're sharing on Twitter, then they should be going to your site because that's where conversions are going to happen. That's where they're going to contact you to attend one of your day trips. Whereas you're sending them to Facebook, which like also might convert, but you really want them on your site. That's where that's the yeah. You definitely do not want to send people from Twitter to Facebook to Instagram back to you. Like you're like sending me on page. That's not what you want to do. You, you want to appeal to me. You could use your experience. If, if I'm following you on Twitter, I want to see you're talking to people. You'd be answering questions. So for example, if your goal is to engage people who are looking for trips in Israel, you, there are very very specific search terms that you can search for. Maybe that would be a good term, a search term to start. But someone's just coming to Israel and say, you know, what do you recommend? Jump in and answer. Don't sell, just jump in and answer. Just be like a, a resource to the community. And at the end of the day, you know, when you when you answer someone on Twitter, if you give a really valuable answer, the first thing you're gonna do is gonna click on your bio. And then you see what you want, and be like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And at the end of the day, you know, whenever the end of the day happens, it will, you know, sell. It will get you to service. But you need to use Twitter as as a, a listening, engaging platform, not as a sales platform. Because if I come here right now, this is pretty much of no value to me. Um, you know, again, it's all broadcast, it's all cut off, it's all automatic, it's, it's not, not engaging, not, um, we're talking about branding before, you know, kind of like companies today aren't, you're not just a company, you have a face, you need to have a face, you be able to make yourself accessible, approachable, um, and your Twitter right now is not doing it, as far as I can tell. Um, and I would also look at individual pages of how they're ranking, um, just using a basic program like SEMrush, I see that you don't have so many organic keywords that, that appear to be ranking, these programs aren't always 100%, but Look at your page content and see, you know, what are we trying to accomplish with this page, and what keywords do we want to, to attract, to have people come to? If they're looking for a tour guide in Israel. I do like what you're doing on Facebook, though. Really, very visual. It's good. You're not talking about yourself. You're talking about providing value, like you said. But Twitter, you should do it also, but not not automatic. Um, I just also look at your Facebook profile, and I see that you're sharing content. So first of all, I don't know if you're putting these any of the pictures that you're uploading into a gallery on your site, but I would really recommend that you do that. So you have content on your site as well. And also, like you have two instances where you you highlight 
an article about you. One is in a magazine, I think, Asia Amitit, and then there's something else lower down uh, in Mitzvah Market. That's just two instances. And I don't know if, if you have a blog or a news or anything that's like on your site you know, showing your, in the press, something that's showing that you're alive and like what's going on, but like I would totally make sure to have, let's say, a scan of this uh, uh, Asia Amitit article in your site with like a blurb about it and the Mitzvah Market, at least an excerpt with a link to it, like showing that you guys are like really out there. It's not on your site, it's a shame. Let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's take a look at our last. Just in general, man. Anyone? Yeah. Social, yeah. Can Your I answer? Sister. Sure. <laughs> Sometimes I'm also known as Dina. What? I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Please, Dina, yes. Of I know, my, my sister is appalled. Appalled. I know. Yes. Um, that's a social media question. Yes. Okay. Um, so for one of my clients, I do blogging and social media. Social media meaning um, Facebook and Twitter. I have to, I'm supposed to put up like one tweet and one post per day on, on their account. And it's very, very dry and it doesn't, you know, like not all social media was created equal. Just like, by the way, not all blogging was created equal. Yes, my blog posts are good, but the social media is, it's not, it's not gonna get them any, you know, any leads, it's for sure not. And I, I can't figure out, you know, it basically it gets no traction, it gets no, no activity and I, you lost me at one tweet and one post a day. Yeah. Why? Who said that number? Well, I'm just like, I'm, you know, it's like... Are you working in a house in this company? No. You're a freelancer for the company. Yeah, yeah. And this is what they just defined for you. Yeah, like they just, they basically, they need to know that, you know, that their accounts are active and they couldn't keep Why? it up by Why do they need to know that their accounts are active? Let's just, no, seriously, let's get to the root of this. What is the goal here? What do they, what do they want to accomplish? Do they want to be able to show that they have a Twitter account? That's, that's their goal? So then why are you worried about traction? Her, sorry, I apologize. Her question was, she's working for a, a company that said that she should be posting once a day uh, Twitter, Facebook, and it's getting no traction, it's dry, and she wants to know like what gives. So I, I asked, why one post a day? And that was the definition that they gave her. So if, right. if that's their goal, having one post a day, to have a Twitter account or Facebook account, so then great, mission accomplished. If they want traction, then one post a day you're gonna do it. Not even close. Like you're talking about on Twitter? On Twitter. No. It doesn't matter if you're talking about blogging, Facebook, Twitter, or any other platform. It, you know, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna die. You know, yeah, die but, how do, but then how do you become active on Twitter without like marrying it like you guys are married to it? No offense. Hey, there's scheduled tweets. And, you know, just not that my hands body. shake on Shabbat or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, so um, first of all, like I said, Twitter, is, as I see it, is much more of a powerful listening platform. So you can have, you know, open your tweet deck, add columns, See my screen, but you have columns and search terms, anybody that mentions your brand, one of your competitor's brand, something that you think is a search term that's relevant, and listen. Let me give you, let me give you a, story, a quick story, an example. Um, anybody here over here at Test Flight? Test Flight? Okay, so Test Flight's a uh, company that lets you um, distribute your app before it's on the App Store, right? So if you want to get your friends to read your questions, I was like, no, don't read really their questions, just favorite it. They're just whoever's not active on Twitter, you can reply to a quick like just like email, you can reply to something, you can retweet it, which is like forwarding it, or you can favorite it, which is the most subtle thing you can do. <laughs> Basically, you know you favorite it, and they know you favorite it. Pretty much no one else knows. And he's Israeli, he doesn't understand the word subtlety. And I, no, the word subtlety does not exist in Hebrew. Like, seriously. No, it really doesn't. I can't think of the word. Yeah, meeting up with Don is probably the closest word, but subtlety is Israeli is like So and I'm Israeli, but I'm not really defend anyone. But anyway, my point is. He's like, let me sell to them. Let me jump in and sell and be you know, a salesman. I was like, do not do that. Just favorite the tweets. And he's like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I said, just do it. Five minutes later, he sends me a screenshot. The guy says, what platform should I use? He favorited his tweet. He got a push notification saying, test there, he's favorited your tweet. Right? First thing he did was clicked on their bio. He's like, oh, this is exactly what I need. He then tweets out, wow, those test there guys really know how to listen. They just got a new customer. He didn't even open his mouth. He listened. He let him know, I heard you. I'm not selling to you, but I did hear you. Come check us out. In the subtle, subtle way possible, right? So, how many times you tweet, what you're, it's with all that, so you have to use Twitter as a search and listening platform. And yes, you should share content there absolutely more than once a day. Same again, same thing goes for Facebook. And like I said before, the more you get, uh, I, I think that you should probably reevaluate re -evaluate their goals with them and say, if your goals are to have a Twitter account, then great, mission accomplished. But yeah. that's really not going to get you very much, you know. It doesn't do anything if you're not used to it. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, Here, are you guys using wireless? What? Why are the other wireless? Mike? No. I think we have the wireless. Oh, I didn't even see that. Oh, look at that. All right. Let's start again. Go for it. Not working, all right. Not working. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, Christian, here, you mentioned a little bit of thought um, that uh, to dispense with RSS feed and to go with email subscription. So what I wanted to know is can you recommend 
before the email subscription service from March. So you're not exactly dispensing with the RSS because as long as your site's running on WordPress, for example, you have a built-in RSS feed. So if someone like visits your site and wants it, they'll find it. But you don't have to have it using up real precious real estate that could do something else. So the, the mailing service that we use now and recommend to everyone is MailChimp. And you could do RSS email through MailChimp. So for you guys, because you have a lot of content, um, you could set it, you can allow people to let's say subscribe to a daily email of the latest posts or you know weekly or whatever. So you could have that. You could also have a manually created email for other people where you let's say highlight things. But um, it's just it's really user friendly. You can look pretty professional, pretty easily. They have nice templates and uh, it's got good stats and it just it integrates well with WordPress and other sites. So that's what I recommend. All right, next up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great points, by the way. And it had products for home, and that's based on Magento. But it's an older version of Magento, and it's really difficult to upgrade. Oh. So the question is there's something called Pexify now, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, which is Magento, but they get, have the latest um, Magento, or, and that can be mobile responsive, but it's based on the States, and the blog is hosted in the UK. Or to go, um, WordPress as well, using something like WooCommerce or the e-commerce like that. What, what are you selling? selling? Like how complex is your question? Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's not terribly complex. It's, it's uh, I'm going to give you the website if you want yeah. to look at it. So it's mocha.uk.com. M-O-C-H-A. Oh, mocha, like uh, yeah. coffee, whatever. <laughs> M-O-C-H-A.com. Wow, it's a really good website. Dot uk.com. Dot co.com. No, UK.com. It's a subdomain of, of UK.com. I'm so excited there. It was .com. Yeah, it's like, wow, that's my new domain. I've been trying to get all this. Do you <laughs> own UK.com? No, someone else does. Uh, they sell off subdomains. So uh, you're selling. Yeah. What are you selling? Interesting. So selling off subdomains. So I would, if anything, move to your own website and yeah. not work off of .uk.com. Um, build your own strength, build your own identity, and, and start from fresh there. Do you think um, that if, if you do a proper redirect, and I don't know what system you have worked out with UK.com, that they'll redirect all the links, just make sure that you know, proper migration takes place. Um, you'll lose some link equity, but not enough that it's not worth it in the long run. Go to the blog real quick. The blog. Sure. Uh, the blog. Pop-up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Think how it doesn't like the pop-up. Raise your hand if you like pop-ups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, having a blog on WordPress with a site on Magento is, is very common. And there's nothing wrong with it, and, and I think that it's perfectly fine to do that. Even if it has some different countries? Yeah. Yeah. Different, different, IP, different IPs. And, and it, are, where are you selling? Are you only selling for the UK? I mean, even so, having a blog on WordPress mainly, is not mainly, a problem. Mainly, mainly UK. Wait, but when you say your, your blog's on WordPress, is this, is this WordPress.com? No, it's a blog. blog. Dot no, I know, but it could be hosted on. There's, there's self-hosted WordPress, so, so then you could host it in the UK also. Why? Oh, you're asking questions. Right now, it is. The blog is hosted in the UK. Work. The blog is hosted in the UK, and the agenda right now. <laughs> so it's all the same at the moment. But if I want to change the e-commerce side of it, rather than getting a developer to strip out and redo the whole of Magenta, it's only going to Pixify, which gives me mobile responsive, and it's a much more efficient to do that. By the way, so the question was, and this is obviously a very, very relevant question for everyone. Uh, you know, starting a blog and blogging is too hard for most people. I'm Literally, for most people. I completely, one hundred percent disagree, and I could not stress this enough. Um, let, let me tell you again a story. That's a story, right? So uh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Does everyone like stories? Everyone likes stories. I think you've got so questions. Really no, <laughs> Questions. Okay. Questions. Okay. All right, quick, quick, quick. We want to get to everyone's questions. Okay, the bottom line is that, and, and I'm happy to talk to you about this afterwards, whatever it is you're doing, right, you, the assumption is you're passionate about what you're doing. The assumption is you're somewhat knowledgeable, knowledgeable about what you're doing. It is absolutely, today, it could not be easier. I mean, literally, go to Medium, go to Tumblr, go to WordPress, open in 35 seconds, you have a blog, come to work every day, make your morning coffee, and write something. It could be 300 words, it could be 1,000 words, it could be cute video with a nice paragraph, write something. The point is that when I come to your blog today and I read something, I come back tomorrow and there's something there again, and I come back the next day there's something there, I'm going to bookmark on that site and you have me. 
But if you if you don't write consistently, then you're going to lose me. And I completely disagree. I cannot write about ballet. I agree with you. But if you're working in a certain space, the assumption is that you know and love what you're doing, then write about it. Let's talk about that. We'll argue. Yeah. Let's take more questions. Ari's walking Can in. Can I just say mic. something about that magenta question? Just I wanted to say something that I think is clear because it's such an important thing. If you're running a system that's outdated, you need to get off it. Whatever it is. If it's WordPress, if it's Joomla, if it's Magento, if it's putting yourself up to a tremendous risk, and then if Google, first of all, your site could be hacked, then Google identify this hack, then go get your rankings back. Good luck. So you need to get off it. You just need to, like, okay, for everyone. And you yeah, need to get security. off it. Yeah. Go for it. Next question. So while we're on the topic, while we're on the topic, I started a blog about two months ago. Um, I'm, I'm posting once a week, for example. I'm not posting daily. Um, no, it's perfect. But it's a niche blog. I'm just trying to build momentum. I don't have a lot of time to invest in it because I work full time as a mom. What would you say is the next step that, you know, where can I invest my time that I would get the biggest return from it in terms of moving ahead and building, further building momentum? Increase it once a week, twice a week. I'm serious. What about certification on like social, right? Could, if she was building like a Facebook page that coordinated with her work? I have social media. So I, I think, yeah. in my humble opinion, having all those things are great when you have content. If you're just on Twitter for the sake of being on Twitter, you have no content, you're just making noise in your files. Sorry? Twitter right, I'm, I'm just giving Twitter as an example. The point is, if I would say, right now, if you have to um, increase you know, ROI, increase the content. Worry about social nets and first build that database of content, as much content as you possibly can. If it's twice a week, then, then that's double you know, the amount of traffic and distribution that you'll get if you're writing once a week. Uh, you, can, you can build a presence kind of like on a low flame on Facebook and Twitter and the other things, but definitely your focus should be to increase the volume. Okay, and in terms of increasing the visibility or accessibility, it's a good blog, but it's a niche in terms of relating to people who are not like Facebook or Sherpa. So, so what's the site? Accidentally Crunchy.com. Accidentally what? Crunchy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Rachel, one thing she could probably do, right, is, is do some markup for the recipes. The recipes have their own special markup. Are you doing recipes? Right. Or? I would say, oops, I don't know how to spell. So there's like some special markup that you can do so that when people are searching for these, they'll show up as full on like recipe snippets in the search results. All the like famous, you know, uh, recipe blogs do that. I don't even see your site in that. Yeah. This is a blog, right? It's just a blog. It's not an accidentally cr oh, crunchy. Yeah. Pinterest? Totally. Who said Pinterest? Yeah. Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest could be a great resource to have the right tags, and I think that people can find you the right way. Um, get analytics, <laughs> see what people are looking at. What? She said she has a uh, oh, Guest blog. You should find some leading food blogs that are relevant or related and, and write blog posts there too. Maybe make your head more blogs. specific of what allergies are you trying to reach. Um, where allergies, food, and life merge is pretty broad, but maybe someone who's looking for a specific allergy will, will be able to find their site. I have like categorized types in the Instagram with allergies and stuff, so if they're taking the question necessarily. Are those categories indexed? The recipes are all indexed by allergies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm looking at the categories now. I think you can see it on the screen. Um, uh, need a wireless mic. So I, I just want to say that I do love the design here. It's so clean and so nice. And I also love the fact that it's half content in terms of like the public fold, right? When I come in for the first time, I see kind of your story and why you created this blog. That kind of hooks me in, you know? Oh. Uh, just by the way, the link to your Pinterest from the icons there, it's broken. So even with looking at the, the individual yeah, category yeah, pages, I would still clean up the title tag on it. Oh, clean up oh, the yes, middle description. Right now, it's only pulling straight from the page. Have something unique to, to attract the visitors. Um, how crappy an idea is reblogging? What does that mean? Any other questions? Like, like, like yes, how bad of an idea is reblogging? What do you mean by reblogging? Like if like, you find a sim uh, website that's similar to yours, especially in a niche, and you're saying duplicate content, you could you're be, taking their content, but. Saying that it came from them. It's not. not I wouldn't do it. 
I really would try to avoid it. It's no, 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 you're doing, you're doing, you're doing credit. credit. You're giving credit. Credit. credit does not give you permission right. to copy someone else. I mean, you could do blog to blog, canonical, you know, art page to page, but at the same time, I think that if you could create unique content, it's always better. You're looking for someone who doesn't have the time to create things. But it's not that's So then what are you providing to people? You're just that's not the taking solution. together No, it's not content. a solution, but it could be a way to drive traffic. If you unique content, and once, you know, whatever, a month, let's say, you find a good site, you want to just give credit, you take a little excerpt and you link back, and that's not the end of the world. But as a, as a strategy, just take content from other places. You're not doing anything. Right there. But you see sites do it. Times of Israel does it in quotes, you know, this, that, the other. Okay, Curation is a thing these days, right? People collect content and share it, and it is useful, except for that you have to think about what you're doing and what, how, why you're doing it, and maybe which tool you're using. Maybe Let's go to our next question. question. Think about this. Two, two things I'm going Okay. Say. If my blog, let's say it's a corporate blog for my company, sure. we sometimes blog in other people's blogs. Yes, yes, our yes. authors. Can mm -hmm. I then re say, you know, in my blog, in my corporate blog, can I say, oh, we had a blog in link this and this link to it. Just a link. Oh, link to it. Or just, just a link. Um, but I want to no, make it a blog. You should use the canonical tag. Shouldn't you point the canonical you tag to the, the original source? source. Back to the original source. You okay, won't canonical see the... has been mentioned like 25 times. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Can you say 10 times fast? Can I just tell you that uh, half of my staff, they say canonical, they don't truly know what it means. So it's just as a buzzword. It, oh, yes, it's, it's a, a meta tag. I'll, I'll say it really simple. It's a meta tag. It's a little tag that says, hey, this is the true source of the content. That is the only way to get right. content. It's, but what it's saying is it's in the... No. So, but in other words, I think what you're asking, can you par write a paragraph and then link to it? Is that your question? Like, I, I think that's fine so long as you're not copying verbatim, but right. ultimately the other page is going to get the... It's going to get the main credit for... for right. And so if somebody Googles the a phrase from that article, Writing a blog post once a month is literally as if you did not write a blog post as far as I'm concerned. That's my experience. You're writing like a blog post. Don't look at any agency blog. Yeah. 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 So that's definitely something that uh, a WordPress Google user, just a, a tip about canonical tags for WordPress uh, users, if you have Yoast SEO plugin um, installed, yeah. then per post and per page, you can enter the canonical tag very easily, so you don't have to go into the header. Yeah, but it, it'll do it automatically right. unless you've got it. Oh, we just made up that term, just to play with you guys. That's right. It's really no such thing as a canonical tag. It's made up. Totally made up yeah. Here it is. By the way, you mentioned just really quick, Neil Patel. I don't know if you recently saw it. You recently stole somebody the article on his blog, one of his ghostwriters, the whole scandal. I love Neil. Just thought you were talking uh, about one taking out of people. Last question, I think. <laughs> yeah. One or two. All right, Manal. Question for Hiba mainly. Uh, if I'm trying to reach out to somebody on Twitter, I'm engaging with him. Uh, how do I know when I'm overdoing it? Honestly, if you retweet me, then I know then whatever I wrote to you was great. If you responded, I know it's great. But if you don't respond... Right, so there, there, I, I know like a concrete answer. There is no concrete answer. It's just like real life. How do you know when you're annoying someone? <laughs> no, really, I'm, I'm dead serious. It's literally the equivalent. I mean, you have to have just judgment and common sense. You know, if you write someone 16 times a day, I'm exaggerating. Obviously, that's pretty annoying, especially when they don't respond. Um, you know, there's no rule. There's no like number that I would say, but... Just be, you know, you can, just really be you. What you would do offline, do online. What you wouldn't do offline, don't do online. And that's true for Twitter or any other platform. Uh, Twitter is for engaging. So, you know, reaching out to someone, it doesn't matter who the person is, there's, it's totally acceptable behavior, totally normal. Even some might say breaking into conversations, in, again, in a polite manner, it's acceptable behavior. But, you know, if the person's not interested, the person's not interested, figure out another way. You know, don't be, be persistent, don't be annoying. And that's quite a real way to explain it. Next question, is that? All right. Ari just challenged me, challenged Hillel with this, but this isn't a challenging question. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sarah Frank's going to Punchy and Miriam, because Miriam knows more about WordPress than anyone else. 
The structure of the URL is being strained on accidentally country. Because the way, if you flow over the links, there's, a, there's an odd thing going on with index.php slash category. And I'm sure Miriam can help you sort that out. But it would be worth getting some guidance on that. Where is this showing up? Accident, accidentally crunchy. And if you click on what? You, the, the URLs have the index. Are you on a Windows server? Instead of oh. having a clean URL structure. Uh, that's pretty easy to are you Are you on a Windows server? That's probably why it's happening. Yeah, you should clean up the, you should do oh, a sure. full on-site audit to make sure that you don't have this index.php yeah, within the site. Um, click on the WordPress. That's part of the, the technical. Click on the WordPress the little icon. This? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's on IIS. You're on a Windows server, and that's why that's happening. So that's that's typical of installing WordPress on like a Microsoft server. In general, server. don't use Windows servers. Yeah, basically, really. It's, really it's, like, it's a headache. And, it's, oh, yeah. it's so hard. And then you have to have these weird URLs and like other weird rewrite issues. Right. You just really just don't. <laughs> Better to don't. Use Linux. Uh, any other final? One last question. Right? You can talk to us afterwards, obviously. What? I'm looking around for questions. Anyone else? One final question. Oh, are you have any questions? Uh, I'll have... in the back there. All the way in the back. Can you... Well, there's a question on that. Can I have a question? Sure. Uh, if there's a hosting container, will you use the download it now? Yeah. 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 And then if you know, it'll say your, your website. For, for instance, if we were using uh, accidentally crunchy, it could be accidentallycrunchy.com slash index slash home. But you should always have the count of that on the home page. To reference so, back to the and, and also, just to, on, on that note, if you're doing any UTM tagging, like campaigns and Google Analytics for email marketing and stuff, like any any parameters, the canonical tag helps you avoid those parameters getting in there. I just want to say one more thing. If you aren't convinced that you should be on Twitter, forget all the other things. What you're missing right now, on Twitter right now, about this thing in real time, you don't know what you're missing. This is fantastic stuff. I'm just saying. Any last questions? This is a time to get your site reviewed. Even if it's harsh, you'll get some good advice. More social. Or more social. Yes. Yeah, love your beer. Yeah. Three more. Yeah. Can we check the site? Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. site? Uh, we opened our site. Yeah, what's the site? What's the site? Ophirop.com. Dot com, you said? Dot yeah. com? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm but we're, our, we're only in charge of photonics. Yeah. You're only in charge of what? Photonics. Only the photonics section here. Yeah. That's a cool thing to be able to say. I'm only in charge of photonics. What? Wait, so you're, you're, you're in charge of photonics. It's like different, I mean, <laughs> different <laughs> strategies and other parts of the website. That's interesting. What's going on at the bottom of the page here? It's just it completely looks like you're trying to just stuff keywords. And sorry, I'm being told to be nice. Oh. No, really, why do you have so many? Why do you see yeah. text on the bottom? It's like because we used to have uh, an outsourced SEO advisory. Is that, is that really what they did? Gotta hate us for those. Uh, <laughs> really? I'm I'm right. I'm I need to apologize. We need to apologize. I apologize. We got, no, because we never got back to them. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> we could have helped. That was, that's my fault. Um, <laughs> I blame Ari. No, 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 we didn't us. do it. Oh, you didn't no, do it. No, no, reached out. No, no, no. Yeah, um, but I would say, if, you know, this is actually a tactic. I haven't worked on a Hebrew site in probably about how long have I been at Tina? You know, four years. So I don't really know, but I know it, it has worked in Hebrew before where you can stuff keywords, but I would not do that yeah, in English. You got to get rid of that stuff right away. No, can exactly. I just say something about that in my universe a little bit? This stuffing words, whether it's hashtags or keywords, like, think beyond short term. Value, right? If you're just take hashtags for one second. Everyone you know, not everyone, a lot of people like, you know, write a tweet and have like 74 hashtags. Hashtags like clinic. Yeah, because they want people to find them through search. But what are they what are they in essence saying? What do you in essence say when you're writing like a you know 40 character tweet and then like 70 characters of hashtags? You're basically saying, so you follow me, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the people that don't follow me yet. I want them to follow me. And I'm saying, screw you, like I don't care about you. You're seeing my spam, but I don't care about you. I'm talking to people that haven't followed me yet. That's, that's idiotic. Right? Same thing with you know keyword stuff. You just focus on the people that are on your site. You know, if you build it, they will come. If you provide value to your followers, to your audience, then, then your traffic will. If you think all the time more traffic and more, it's just not going to work. And, and one last thing about those links on the bottom. I think it's really great to have the unique content and to, and to have those pages because I think it really, it probably does a really great job of, of attracting the audience for for these unique keywords. But I would just try to find a better way of, of linking to them and having them featured 
because um, just from first glance, it's just it's not as attractive to, to the basic visitor. Um, just about your homepage, your photon, hey, photons. Um, uh, is this like useful content for your potential clients, like a list of types of power, laser power, and energy meters, or wouldn't it be useful? Uh, product but like, it doesn't say anything, like or it doesn't say anything about why they should buy it from you, or why your products are better than other people's, or even the features and benefits of your products. It's just like a, a bulleted list. It doesn't seem very useful. Just one other thing, get Adobe Flash Player. I think we've done that on the on system, because people Bridges. know what PDFs are. Bridges. Yeah, the PDFs, there are these like documents that you All right, we have, to, we have to finish up here. Yeah. But thank you, everyone, so much. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank